On today's episode, we are going to take a look at one of the most popular stocks out right now, and that is NEO. They just reported earnings, so let's see how that went. On today's episode, it's going to be broken down to the following. First, we're going to take a look at their overview of how their earnings went. Then we're going to take a look at the financial numbers, and we're going to end with my overall thoughts on the company. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. It helps so much with that YouTube algorithm, and I truly appreciate it. Like always, my name's Jose Naharo. By day, I'm a senior electrical engineer, but by night, I'm a self-taught investor looking for long-term investments for my portfolio. And if you guys like these hoodies, you should check out the merch. The link's down below. Remember, none of this should be taken as advice as I am not a professional. And before we go any further, just go down in the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on Neo right now? Are you holding? Are you buying? Are you just staying away? I know there's a lot of people like myself who don't have a position and just are keeping track of the company at the moment i have no position um so let me know what are you guys doing with the company right now while you're down there you should also see a link to my discord channel it's free to anybody that wants to join and i post every time i buy and sell a stock there and like i said it's completely free i'm not charging anybody here for anything while you're down there, you should also see a link to Weeble. If you sign up following that link, we both could get a free stock. I think right now they're doing a special where we might do where we might get two free stocks. I'm not sure how long this special will last. So make sure to follow that link and subscribe. All right, so right now we're gonna take a look at Neo after hours when when recording this episode. The stock price is sitting at forty six dollars and thirty nine cents. It's actually pretty much flat from earnings if we take a look it was up two percent for the day before reporting earnings right now it's sitting at a market cap of 63.5 billion dollars of market cap that is actually pretty big compared um to, to what i've expected year to date returns are 1152 percent so you 10 over 10 next your money in a matter of less than a year so congratulations to anybody who has been in this wave congratulations to all those long-term investors and just in the past month i believe this stock price was up a hundred percent um for the past month and that is actually pretty impressive usually when you see stock price being extended that much and after earnings are reported you would expect at least a strong pullback and neo did not see much or any i wouldn't say i would say it saw no pullback whatsoever after reporting earnings right now at its current stock price of 46 dollars 59 it's about three to four percent down from its all-time high so you can see not much of a pullback let's jump in and look at their earnings so their earnings were reported november 17th of 2020 but this was for the quarter that ended september 30th of 2020 so quarter three non-gap earnings per share were a loss of 12 cents and gap earnings per share were a loss of 14 cents which actually beat expectations by three cents so first thing we can see is neo is not profitable in neither non-gap or gap earnings Revenue for the quarter was roughly about $670 million in, in United States dollars. And that was 140% gain compared to the same time last year. That is insane growth. Triple digit growth is not something you see in many companies right now. And that was a beat by about $50 million. So it was a decent sized beat. So we can see Neil did beat on expectations with earnings per share and did beat guidance on um did also be on revenue so i can see with this strong beat i'm pretty sure this is what's holding this stock price up at the moment deliveries of vehicles were 12,206 vehicles this quarter compared to 4,799 vehicles a year ago that again you're seeing that huge growth in just vehicles delivery and just a quarter ago they saw about 10,300 vehicles so an increase of a year ago and an increase of compared to a quarter ago as well and for those that want to know the breakdown of the vehicles it was about 8660 es6s it was 3530 es8s and 16 ec6s the other thing i do want to mention is just in the month of october just in the month of october was one of their biggest month ever they saw a hundred percent year-to-year growth 
on deliveries. In just October, they delivered about 5,000 vehicles. And we're going to see they did give guidance for the upcoming quarter. And it, it, it looks pretty amazing. I do believe that they beat the reason they beat expectations and the reason for this strong guidance that we're going to take a look at is the major reason the stock price hasn't pulled back. So for the upcoming quarter, they say deliveries of vehicles will be between 16,500 to 17,000 vehicles. This is approximately 100% growth compared to same time last year and about 35% growth compared to this quarter right now. So we're seeing strong triple digits growth year to year. And we're also going to see strong double digit growth quarter to quarter. This is, I, I'm not going to lie. This is pretty impressive. Numbers are looking okay, but is it worth the valuation? And that's pretty much the end game of mo most stocks. Let me know on your thoughts right now. Are, are, is this type of growth worth the type of valuation that this company is seeing right now, right? We're seeing they're, they're expecting total revenue to be about $921 million for, for the quarter. This represents an increase of 119% compared to same time last year and an increase of 38% compared to this quarter. So delivery of vehicles and total revenues are going to see strong triple digit growth compared to same time last year and strong quarter growth compared to this quarter right now. And that I'm not going to lie. These are numbers you don't see pretty often um, in, in many companies. So I can see why there is a big hype. Sometimes though, that hype can create an overstretch in price and kind of creates volatility around the stock price. But I mean, just me assuming real quick, let's say they, they're doing about close to 1 billion in quarter four. If this quarter was one of the biggest quarters as well, quarter three, which they made about 670, let's assume for the year, which I don't think they are, they had about $3 billion in sale. With the current market cap, that's almost a 20 price to sales ratio. That is actually pretty high. Um, just looking at a value, valuation like that, just because I'm pretty sure most other EV stocks are sitting at about a price to sales ratio of 11. So their investors are, are obviously betting a bit more on NEO. And is it worth that valuation? You guys should let me know in the comments right now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of NEO bulls. I want to learn from you guys. Why do you think the valuation is worth that much more compared to other EV stocks? And for those bears, let me know as well. What do you think? Why don't you think that valuation is worth that is worth that multiple higher compared to all those other EV stocks? Next, we're also going to take a look at some some updates that pretty much happened in this quarter. The first thing they mentioned is they launched a hundred kilowatt battery power, and, and this is actually pretty impressive. This is a way better than the previous one that they had, which was a seventy kilowatt hour battery. And they're also increasing. If you guys don't know, they have pretty much what they call the BAS, a battery as a service model, where you can do two things with this vehicle. The first thing is you can purchase the vehicle with the battery already in there and it costs an X amount of price. Or you can buy that vehicle a bit cheaper without the battery and have a subscription for that battery where you pay a monthly, a yearly subscription for the battery and you can keep replacing the battery. And this overall, I think this is a pretty smart method to do, mainly because a lot of EVs cars lose strong valuations on their on their cars as the years progress because of the depreciation of the battery so with this renewable battery pack where you can just keep switching and out it kind of eliminates that worries for for people it is a pretty cool thing i'm just not sure how much consumers are really worried about it but the overall monthly subscription i think is pretty cool and now with this 100 kilowatt battery pack they're doing that hey any new vehicles that you purchase now are going to be with this 100 kilowatt battery pack either you can buy the permanent solution or you can buy the subscription base and if you previously had the 70 kilowatt battery pack you can either go in and replace it for the 100 kilowatt battery pack or you can enter the new, you can upgrade your subscription and upgrade it from the previously 70 kilowatt to now the new 100 kilowatt. So this is actually, I think the overall model is pretty cool, um, but I do believe it's still a little early to tell how much the overall market is really appreciating this and how much type of growth they can see from it. They also, another thing we can see is in September of 2020, they did an offering of ADRs at $17, at a, at a price of $17. That was in September 20th. In September 20th, this stock price was about $17. 
and now it's about 46 in a matter of two months how much has changed in this company for the stock price to grow up that that dramatically in the past two months i'm not here to say a bearish case right because growth companies can continue to go up and go up it's just one needs to be careful with these crazy valuations um just when stock price sometimes overextend there's gonna sometimes be a pullback it's not a guaranteed but it's something investors especially new investors should keep in mind of and stock prices don't normally go up a hundred percent in a matter of a month but that doesn't mean it's gonna fall from there it can still continue to go up another hundred percent from here on the other major thing was they recently in november neo completed a full redemption of equity interest in xbt they redeemed a total of 21 percent equity interest and now directly indirectly wholly owns xpt and for those that don't know xpt mainly designs and develops and manufactures electric motors battery packs and other smart electrical vehicle components so it was pretty smart for them to grab this equity interest on this company all right so now that we took a look at their most recent at an overview of their earnings let's take a look at their financial numbers but before we do that you guys should see a link down there below for seven investing.com where every month they recommend seven stocks for only 17 dollars a month and if you use my link or my promo code jose j-o-s-e you get ten dollars off your first month may i say yes this is an affiliate program but i use their services and would recommend it to anyone all right so let's take a look at their financial numbers first let's take a look at pretty much how their income statement pretty much looked like vehicle sales like i mentioned were up 146 percent compared to the same time last year quarter over quarter vehicle sales were up 22 percent that is insane vehicle margins were also up so vehicle margins for quarter three were about 14.5 percent where a year ago it was actually negative 6.8 percent and the quarter ago there were 9.7 percent they do mention that the reason they see this margin increase was for the two following reasons the first thing is the overall increase of volume sales as you buy more products and you sell more cars you're able to pay a cheaper price per component the second thing is just overall they're also paying cheaper prices for materials so this is overall helping increase the vehicle margins next like we mentioned total revenues were up 146 percent year to year and 21 percent compared to last quarter the other thing i want to take a look at is gross margins gross margins for quarter three were 12.9 percent where for quarter two they were 8.4 percent and for quarter three same time last year was 12 point negative 12.1 percent so we're seeing huge growth there we saw growth in vehicle margins we're also seeing growth in gross margins next we have loss from operations loss from operations are decreasing for those that don't know loss from operations here you have your research and development here you have your sales and marketing and here you have i forget what was the other one but you have one more general and administrative um general and administrative expenses and look a year ago they spent about 2.4 billion dollars in here and i'm pretty sure right here these values are in random bees um which is the chi um, chinese currency that they're using but now last year like i mentioned was 2.4 billion now they're seeing and sitting at 946 million loss there so yes it's still a loss from operations and you're always going to see a loss from operations what you want to see is a decrease of loss from operations and the main reasons we're seeing this decrease in loss from operations is quarter three of 2019 was a huge ramping time for neo they were pretty much finishing it was like the the end time for a lot of vehicles that they were going to start to release so they were seeing a lot of increase in their research and development during that time at the end of the day like i mentioned neo right now is not profitable this quarter it lost about 98 cents per share but compared to same time last year where it was two dollars and 48 cents loss so again we're seeing we're still negative here but it is improving we're getting closer to that profitability rate just a quarter ago it was a negative one dollar and 15 cents so we're doing better than a year ago and better than a quarter ago and i don't know why i keep saying we i don't have any positions in neo 
Next, I wanted to take a look at their balance sheet, right? We saw that this is a company that is not profitable right now. So we have to make sure that they have a lot of cash at hand to be able to withstand uh, a, a few years of not being profitable. So right now they have about $2.8 billion of cash and cash equivalents and about $400 million of short-term investment. So about $3.24 billion of quick cash available to them. If we go jump straight to their total liabilities, their total liabilities are about $3 billion. So the first thing this tells me is this company pretty much has enough cash to pay off its total liability. So this is a very, very strong balance sheet, in my opinion. If we're just looking at short-term and long-term borrowings, which is a form of debt, it's only about $900 million. So if we look at that, this company has about three to four times more cash than it has long-term and short-term debt. So again, this is a very healthy balance sheet of the way it's looking right now. So now let's take a look at my overall thoughts on on neo but before we go don't forget to check out my second channel jose nahara entrepreneur i pretty much just talk about my overall process I, i've been doing this for the past seven eight years and just trying to better myself um so make sure to check out that channel and if you guys want to support the channel also make sure to check out the merch um self-taught investor i thought this was the perfect merch for me and i'm pretty sure most of you guys are in the same boat as me so now my thoughts on neo and i want to start this off with technical analysis normally as a long-term investors technical analysis are not the first thing i look at they are usually the last thing i look at and that's why they're at the end of the video um so the first thing i look at is to see is the stock over extended from its moving averages Unfortunately for NEO, that is the case. It is overextended from its moving averages. But that does not mean that it will pull back. Two things can happen. It can just remain flat and the moving averages catch up to it. Or the worst case scenario, it does a pullback to those moving averages. And both sometimes it's a mixture of both. It does a bit of pullback and it also the moving averages also move up to it. So it's not as heavy as it truly looks. The second thing I try to look at is to see volume levels and at what stock price are the heaviest volumes. And one, we can obviously a strong volume is initially at that low 15s, low 20s is where we're seeing a lot of volume for the stock. This tells me this is where a lot of people have bought in. The other step I'm seeing is within the 30s level and the most recent one I'm seeing right here at the 40s level so we can see this is um I, I can see why a lot of people were expecting a bit of a pullback and honestly i was surprised that there wasn't a pullback happening so what do i like about neil first what i like about neil the overall growth it's seeing is seeing strong growth quarter to quarter year to year it's also in, in revenue growth seeing uh, huge deliveries in vehicles they're also improving their overall industry right we can see by improving from the 70 kilowatt hour battery to now the 100 kilowatt battery um it is showing improvements that they're continuing to invest in their technology and continuing to improve the overall sales another thing that overall battery as a service it's something that I think is pretty cool. Not sure how it's going to work out and how those numbers are really looking. Maybe once we see a, a audited version of their earnings, we might be able to dig in a little deeper on what kind of market and how that is doing. And the balance sheet was also pretty impressive. The guidance that they gave was super strong. What don't I like? The first thing I want to say I don't like about NEO is the valuation it's at right now i i personally believe it is a little bit too overextended but just because i believe it is it doesn't mean it's going to pull back and it doesn't mean it's right for every investor every investor needs to know the risk and tolerance for me it might be a bit too risky for my taste maybe for you it might not be and that's what's different within everybody everybody has different money situation everybody's in different stages of their life and everybody has different risk tolerance the second thing I don't like is right now they are not profitable. Again, we are seeing improvements on their profitability. They are getting lower losses each time. So that's a really great thing. Um, and the third is the international risk of being a Chinese company. Even though China market, I do believe, is one of the biggest EV markets that is in the world right now. Um, I could be wrong. So definitely someone fact check me on that. Um, but there is a big market in China definitely for for the EV for EV cars. Right? But for me, I have other international mainly in China's assets that 
I don't like increasing my overall exposure there. I have a certain limit that I like putting on. And right now, Neo is not one that I'm willing to use to increase that overall exposure. Again, every investor has their own rule and every investor should just understand that one if it's something for one person it's not something for another um so if you are along on neo congratulations on the returns hope the wealth keeps on coming if you're not along on the on neo right now you got to understand what your risk tolerance are are you willing to risk or what are you wanting to do so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode like always let me know what you guys thought take care guys have a good night and see you next time